So my name is Kate Haas. I am a registered dietitian and a licensed dietitian. So there are many different ways to look at body composition. Um, the two compartment model is sort of most often used and that's just looking at fat free mass and fat mass. Um, and then there are like the molecular model which is what we use typically with DEXA and here in research where we're looking at the um, bone mineral content, the muscle tissue, um, fat, and then water composition of the body. So you can get down to looking at the, the atomic level where you're looking at the different, you know, how much oxygen and nitrogen and carbon and everything is in a person's body. But typically at this level we're trying to determine what percent body fat a person has, so what percent lean muscle do they have, what do their bones, how much does their bone contribute, um, and how much body water do they have. And that changes depending on um, age, ethnicity, s life stage. If you were a pregnant woman, your body water would be higher. Um, so we do a lot of different tests, I guess, looking at those differences and how things change over time. BMI is like the quick and dirty way to try to come up with what you think a person's size is like. So BMI stands for um, body mass index and that is kilograms over meters squared. So it's your weight over your height squared. Um, and that can be converted because obviously here in the U.S. we use pounds and inches and everything. Um, so it's not super accurate, but it gives us a great just, you know, picture of a person. So if they're this tall and they weigh this much, we can imagine that they look about like this. So it's inaccurate in um, certain ethnicities, Asian Americans, well, Asian overall tend to have lower bone mass so it's not quite as accurate for that population. Um, neither is it as accurate for men who have a large build so their muscle mass is much higher because it's just taking weight it's not taking fat or muscle it's just looking at that total body weight. Um, so it, most often it's critiqued because a bodybuilder would be in the obese or morbidly obese category and obviously they're very fit and that that isn't a reflection of their health status but it does give us a good idea of you know overall are they at a healthy weight are they a little overweight are they obese and then we take it further using the other equipment that we have available Okay, so we have a variety of different techniques that we can use to assess body composition. Um, and here in a research setting, we sort of have the ability to look at body composition in a variety of ways. So depending on what type of research is being done or where it's being done, investigators might um, choose one, one method over another. So they vary in their um, the accuracy, they vary in what how much they cost to run the tests, if they need electricity, things like that. But um, the skin fold measurements would be our, I guess what people think of when you tell them you're measuring body composition is they envision somebody pinching their fat, which this is great because it's portable and it's relatively inexpensive, but it's not hugely accurate. So if an investigator doesn't have a lot of money, but they want to look at a large population out in say a village somewhere or out at a health fair where they no, don't necessarily have electric access to electricity then this would be a great tool for them to use. Um, we also do like waist and hip circumference measurements just with measure tape measures, head circumference. Um, we have a DEXA machine which is this machine behind me it's probably our gold standard for um, body composition just because it's taking an actual image that shows us a picture of your bone, lean tissue, fat, um, and it breaks that up into compart compartments and then we're able to see exactly how much fat your body has, how much muscle, how much bone and everything. Um, previously the underwater weighing method or technique was 
sort of the gold standard for research. That, there aren't many facilities that still have that uh, equipment or capability just because it requires, you know, this dunking machine plus a pool and all these other things. Participants don't necessarily like having to be dunked underwater time and time again. Um, so instead we have the bod pod, which is pretty much the same thing. You're looking at changes in volume, but instead of changes in volume in the water, we're looking at an air, so it's air displacement. Um, and then we have a Tanita scale or a BIA machine, bioelectrical impedance analysis, um, and that's where it sends an electro electrical current up and down your body. Uh, there are many different types. Some you can l um, look at one side of your body or the bottom half of your body, the upper half of your body. It depends on the population and what's the best. Tanita scale is, Tanita is a brand of BIA that's most widely used. Um, and, but you could find a BIA in your local gym or something. If they're not using skin folds, they'd most likely be using a BIA or just a little handheld device that will tell you your body composition. Um, other than that, height, weight, um, those are the standard body, the ways that we measure body composition, I would say. And a lot of times in research, we'll take a body composition measurement, then they'll have an intervention or a period of time that something has changed and then we'll do it again. So most often we're looking at changes, not just one time point.